In this three-part series, we've extracted a lower first molar, we've grafted it with platelet-rich fibrin and a resorbable collagen membrane. We've let that heal for six months. Then we've placed an implant, root form implant, and let that heal for three months. Now we're going to uncover the implant, take an open tray impression, fabricate a implant abutment, and crown and seat the restorations. So this is the tooth that was extracted. You can see all the granulation tissue and the infection between these two teeth. So this is after we've extracted it. This is platelet-rich fibrin has been placed in the sockets. And this is after six months of healing. Look at that alveolar crest. This is at the time of extraction. And see, here's the original alveolar crest and you can see that there has been basically no bone loss. And this alveolar crest is just flat like the floor. Look at this photograph after I've uncovered the ridge. This is where the tooth was extracted and look at that, it's just perfectly flat after six months of healing and that bone is dense natural bone. Okay, so I'm giving local anesthesia. Now I'm using this punch to just punch a hole in the gingival tissue. So this is after the tooth's been extracted, platelet-rich fibrin, resorbable collagen membrane, healed for six months, implant then placed after six months, allowed to osseointegrate for three months, and now we're back to take the impression. And there's the implant. So I'm unscrewing the healing cap, and this is a flat healing cap that's been on the implant, in the implant for three months. There's the implant. And now I'm screwing in an impression coping. Take a radiograph to confirm that the impression coping is completely seated. And then you can see the implant is ideal. This is gonna be a polyether with custom tray, open tray impression. An open tray impression means you've got a hole in the impression tray and the impression coping will be sticking out of that hole so you can unscrew it and pull that impression coping in your impression. I'll show you how to do that. And it's important that you're able to wipe impression material off the coronal part of the imp impression coping so that you can see the impression coping right there. So we're trying in the tray, you can see the impression coping sticking through the hole. Now I'm flowing polyether into this custom tray. Notice I've got this two by two over the hole in the custom tray to keep that polyether from flowing out of the hole and going all over the place. Then I'm squirting the wash material around the impression coping and on to the unset polyether in the custom tray. And now I remove the two by two, push the impression to place, and then I take my finger in that hole and push it down into the hole until I feel the impression coping, the coronal part of the impression coping with my finger. And once I feel the coronal part of the impression coping with my finger, I leave it there. So then I move my finger once this has an initial set. Now I've removed that little bit of impression material that was in here and then unscrewed it. So then the impression pulls right out. There's the impression coping, comes out in the tray. And then I'm going to place a larger healing cap, a wider healing cap, back into the implant. And that creates, creates the perfect emergence profile for the final restoration because the gingival tissue will grow around that, around this impression coping. I don't tighten this with my ratchet wrench. I tighten it with real firm finger pressure. This is the implant with the healing cap. You see, that looks ideal. So now I'm going to unscrew the healing cap. Which way are we going to turn this? Lefty Lucy. So you're going to turn it counterclockwise to loosen. Now you see, I've got a two by two in the back of her, his mouth because you don't want to take any chances on dropping uh, the screwdriver. See how beautiful that emergence profile is around the implant. And that's after about three weeks of healing. This is Duralay, and it's a guide for seeding 
the implant abutment. Now, I always like to mark a black mark on the Duralay and then put a similar mark on the abutment. Sometimes it's hard to see that little groove in the mouth. So I like to put a black mark and then when I'm aligning things in the mouth I can see those the black mark on the Duralay guide is lined up with the black mark on the implants. Then I unscrew the implant, just clean it with the isopropyl alcohol and see this line is going to line up with that line. So just in case it would fit another way, I don't want to think about that. I know it's lined up correctly. Then you fit this part on the adjacent teeth. I love doing implant. And then you're going to screw it in. Which way are you going to screw it? Righty tighty. Clockwise to screw it in. Then I'm going to screw this abutment into the implant 35 Newton centimeters. And see here's 35 Newton centimeters. That's the perfect tightness. Implants are kind of like heart transplant. They're very easy if you know how to do them. Just follow the steps. So this is a radiograph to confirm that the Im implant abutment is properly seated in the implant. Look at that alveolar crest. Doesn't that look great? That's after three months of implant placement. So there's the implant abutment. We're going to try in the crown. Well, that's ideal. One of the big problems with rest restorative failure around an implant is cement that's not been removed around the crown. So I'm placing Vaseline all around the crown so the cement will not stick to it. It'll be easy to remove. Now this is plumber's tape. You can put cotton balls in the implant abutment hole, but plumber's tape is another really good way to seal that hole. You just cut this up and roll it in a little hot dog and then stick it in there. You don't have to pack it real hard but just put it in there and then press it. This is very durable and it does a good job of sealing that hole. Now I'm going to squirt the final cement. This is just Unisim composite cement and don't fill the entire orifice up. Just squirt a little bit around the inside edge. That's all. That's enough. And then I'm squirting just a little bit in the hole of the implant abutment to be sure that's completely sealed and there's not any air in there because that could make a difference if somebody went up uh, in an airplane or was scuba diving. Then I've got my cotton tip applicator with the red rope wax on the tip as a carrier for the crown all Vaselined up and I'm going to push firmly. Now what I do is I put my thumb on the crown and I take two by twos, a stack of two by twos and place those under the patient's mandible and then just I say I'm going to put a lot of pressure and I just squeeze slowly but firmly and hold it for 15 seconds. So then while it's setting I'm going to floss mesial and distal of that crown. Should just pop right through and I'm going to let it set initially and remove the excess with floss with a knot in it, the back end of a scaler, and cotton balls held by cotton forceps. Then I'm going to check the occlusion, have the patient grind. I don't want any premature contacts on the implant, and I certainly don't want any eccentric contacts on the crown. There's the final restoration. Look how healthy that tissue is. So this is a very predictable way to extract a molar tooth, graft it with platelet-rich fibrin, place a root form implant, and final restoration of implant abutment and crown, and that's the dental minute.